Hello everyone and welcome to The Vortex where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris coming to you from the annual CPAC conference being held here in Washington, D.C. Each year this conference is, gathering, is a gathering of thousands of Americans who come together to listen to various speakers and strategize over how to prevent the erosion of conservatism and figure out the best plan of attack moving forward. But during an election year, it's especially about getting or retaining control of the levers of power of the government, especially the White House. The U.S., owing to liberal control, has morphed into a nation where practically all the power in the country is centralized now here in the nation's capital, something the founders never envisioned. But decades of liberal drift have allowed them to consolidate control, and now the resulting reality is, if there is not a strong conservative presence here, America is destined to become a socialist country. All the action now is in D.C., period. Just one data point, for example, same-sex marriage. State after state voted it down, a stunning string of defeats. Then it came here to the U.S. Supreme Court with Obama appointees on it, confirmed by a Democratic Senate, and with one stroke, American voters in multiple, multiple states were simply wiped away. So the fight for power is really a fight for use, or better said, abuse of that power. And for Catholics, you better be very concerned by all of this. A government which has that much power centralized in the hands of a few Marxists will come after you in a heartbeat. But Catholics may be the ones who put a halt to the socialist steamroller. And more to the point, Latino Catholics. In the world of politics, it's not about getting everyone you like to vote for you and getting them like you. It's about getting enough people in the right places to like you and vote for you. So for both Trump and Democratic front runners, the race is on to secure enough Latino votes to put up a roadblock in the face or the path of the other one. For Trump, that number is 40%. Thanks to the horror of abortion in the black community foisted on them by Democrats, African Americans have now slipped to the second most populous minority group in the country, supplanted by Latinos. That makes the brawl over their votes a blistering one. Just as he was being defeated by Hillary in 2016, near the end, Bernie Sanders realized that he was garnering a sizable number of Hispanic votes. In 2016, it proved to be too little too late, but for the past four years, Bernie has been making massive inroads into the Latino community, and it is that effort which propelled him to be the, into the cruising, bruising that he, got, he delivered his other opponents in the Nevada caucuses. He gained a massive percentage of the Latino vote. The common political thought is that Trump is not well received in the Latino community. Indeed, in 2016, he only, got, only gained 28% of their votes. But a string of recent polls is suggesting the common belief may, on 2016 now may be wrong. Three separate polls from political polling outfits show Trump's approval numbers in the Latino community have been steadily increasing and now stand at 44%. Further polling shows Trump in a head-to-head matchup with Bernie that the president would get 41% of the vote. That number is keeping Democrats up at night, so much so that The Atlantic, a liberal media outfit, published an article on this very topic, setting off alarm bells about Trump's growing popularity with Hispanic voters. Two other polls by The Economist and Politico show Trump's numbers hovering at just below 40%. But more importantly, they're on the upswing, steadily climbing, so much so that Trump campaign managers are predicting that he will finish on Election Day with more than 40% of the Hispanic vote. The vast majority of these Latino voters are Catholic, and Trump's pro-life position holds great appeal to them. But also, the demonizing the left has done of the president, painting him as a racist and so forth, those charges don't seem to be believed by a large number of these Catholic voters. In fact, for all the talk about kids in cages and Mexican criminals and rapists and all that stuff, a large group of Latinos actually support the wall and Trump's immigration policies. And in the state of Florida, not only are Latinos not particularly down with socialism, but Bernie's doubling down on Fidel Castro has turned off large numbers of them. Even Democratic Latinos in Florida were appalled. Democrats 
and some of them have actually gone to court to have Bernie taken off the state ballot. The charge being, Bernie isn't even a Democrat, he's an independent. So once again, digging deep into the numbers with a Catholic lens, the Catholic vote, specifically among Latinos, which is roughly 40% of the U.S. Catholic population, may be the final determinant in who occupies the Oval Office next year. The number of that vote to keep an eye on for Trump is 40, 40 percent. If he gets close or even exceeds that magic 40, he will be very difficult to defeat. God love you. I'm Michael Vorce.